G'day guys, welcome back. I'm Michael from Michael of Trauma Companions. Today I want to speak to you about a very useful tool. In fact, it's the best tool that I've used to improve my skills in participating in a pastoral conversation. And it's called a verbatim. Now I've got a PowerPoint I'm going to share with you here. And here we go. So what is a verbatim? A verbatim is a written record, as best you can remember it, of a conversation you had with somebody. You can see it comes from a Latin phrase, which means exactly as written. Now, I don't expect you to have photographic memories, but as far as possible, we want to have a record of a conversation. And on the next page, I'm going to show you an example of this. So this is an example of a conversation that I had with a lady in our hospital. And you can see very clearly the way I've set it out there. Okay. It's really important with your verbatim that each person in the conversation is clearly defined. So you'll notice on the previous page, I use C for chaplain and P for the patient. And I also number each response. For example, C1, P1, C2, P2. Because it's such a wonderful learning tool, it's important that we can quickly go to a verbatim. And I could ask you, um, have a look at C4. I see your response there. What were you aiming at? What were you trying to achieve by asking that question? How did it impact the conversation, do you think? So having our responses numbered just makes it very easy as far as ongoing learning, which is a critical, important part of what the verbatim's all, what, what it's all about. Okay, is it here again just to show you another example? Okay, very simple. Some of the advantages of the verbatim. It's a great way to debrief. Guys, when people have invited us into their world, into their pit, and they want to share something meaningful that they're either suffering from or they've suffered in their past, it's not uncommon that we will be triggered. You know, especially when I first started in my role here as a chaplain in the hospital, when I was hearing stories of grief and loss, abuse, betrayal, it was not uncommon for me to feel triggered, to feel emotions, whether it was anger at the way someone had been treated or deep sadness over how someone was being treated. And so... The verbatim was a very useful tool as far as getting that off my chest, getting that out of me and onto a piece of paper. It was a great way to debrief. Verbatims allow for ongoing reflection and learning. You know, months after you've written a verbatim, you can go back to it and look at it. And you can ask yourself, why did I respond that way? How could I have responded differently? Why did I do this? What could I have done that? would have opened up the conversation more? Why did the conversation end when it did? And all of that information you can reflect on because you've written a verbatim and you've kept it. So they're wonderful for ongoing learning. I have verbatim stretching back more than seven years and I look at them regularly as a way of just reflecting upon where I was and where I am. And, you know, what would I have done different? How could I have done things different? Wonderful tool for, for that ongoing learning and reflection. The written verbatim can be given to your mentor, someone like me, someone else in your life who can see things perhaps that you don't see or can help deconstruct the conversation and ask more specific questions and offer suggestions and advice. The verbatim allows for patterns to be seen. Now, this was really useful for me because for the first two or three months, in my work as a chaplain, I found it very difficult to stop asking questions. And so my verbatims, I could see my verbatims were littered with my questions. And I could also see that very often I asked questions when I was feeling uncomfortable or when there were periods of silence. I also noted that when I asked questions, people tended to answer me. And as a result, I was directing the conversation. And now, as you know, in a pastoral conversation, I'm a companion. I'm, you know, in the passenger seat. The person who's sharing with me 
they're in the driver's seat. But by my drilling them with questions, I actually take over that role. I become the driver and the conversation is steered in the direction of my questions. And that was a pattern that was very, very obvious that was coming out only because from day one, I'd started writing up verbatims and I could see the patterns of, of the questions that I was asking. It's a great learning tool for others. You know, when a volunteer gives me a copy of their verbatim and I can provide them feedback, not only do they learn, but when I, with their permission, of course, forward it to other volunteers, they get an opportunity to learn from someone else's conversation. And it's also a great learning opportunity for me because I've got to reflect and think upon what can I advise here? Where's the downfall? What, what have they done well? What, have, what needs improving? So uh, just a great learning tool for everyone concerned. And it can be a tool for creative writing and practice. What I mean by that is I have some volunteers and students who have said to me, they don't often come across meaningful conversations. And so how do they get to practice writing verbatims? And I will say to them, well, imagine you're having a conversation with someone. Imagine you're sitting with someone who's telling you something very meaningful. It might be a divorce. It might be a terminal diagnosis. They're sharing something with you that's very painful. And you can have a conversation, an imagined conversation. But if I respond appropriately in an imagined conversation, it's just going to help me respond appropriately in an actual conversation. So if you're struggling to find enough meaningful conversations to be able to write up as a verbatim, then imagining a conversation is just as useful. So what are the disadvantages of these verbatims? Well, obviously you need to have a reasonable memory in order to write them up as accurately as possible. But as I said before, I don't expect people to have a photographic memory. I've never written up one single verbatim where every single word was included or as exactly as it was said, but I get the gist of it, okay? And that's all I'm asking. Get the gist of it as far as you can remember, as far as possible, what was said. And what I find helpful for myself and certainly my students and other chaplains is the verbatim should be written up as soon as possible after the interaction. That's when it's freshest. I know I've had some wonderful, wonderful pastoral conversations. And I've thought to myself, at the end of the day, I'll write this up. It'll be a wonderful thing to keep, a great learning tool. But by the end of the day, I'm either too mentally tired or I've had too many conversations in between that it's all getting a bit jumbled. So what I recommend is if you have a meaningful conversation, write it up as soon as possible. Even if you can just make some brief notes, again, a summary of what it was about that can trigger memories later. But ideally, write it up as soon as possible after the interaction. So what am I writing up? The pastoral conversations. I'm not writing up my social interactions with people. If I'm with a lady like I was this morning and she's sharing with me her passion for collecting antiques, that's not a conversation I'm going to write up. But if the conversation switched to the death of a child many years ago, that part of the conversation I will write up. That's the pastoral conversation. That's the meaningful chunk of this conversation. I'm also going to write up conversations where I felt uncomfortable or I felt triggered, okay? They're the most important ones because they're the ones that are going to offer me the most insight into myself. What is triggering me and why? Why am I feeling uncomfortable? What in this person's story is, is troubling me? So they're really, really important ones to write up. And also, I know I'm supposed to contain all the other elements of a social conversation. So if I'm in a conversation and I want to correct someone's theology or I want to share a, a similar experience and I know in my own mind I shouldn't be doing that, write it up. And then I can sit with what was it about this conversation where I felt the need to ask a question? or offer advice? 
what was it about this interaction where I felt really strongly I wanted to leave them feeling hopeful? You know, so these are the conversations that I want to write up. And again, the imagine pastoral conversations. It's good practice. The more we practice trying to memorize stuff, the better. And the more we practice with our responses, even in an imagined setting, the better the overflow into a real conversation is going to be. Now, guys, if you have any questions about the verbatim, please put them in the comment section. I'd be more than happy to answer it. Let me just stop sharing this screen now back here. Um, like I said, it's a wonderful tool. It's wonderful to practice the skill of containment. Okay. See my other video about um, the pastoral conversation. The pastoral conversation is very pure. Okay. And so practicing containing all those other elements in the social conversation, it's, it's just necessary. That's what we need to do. We need to practice them. But when we're having those pastoral conversations, write them up write them up and start reflecting and learning from them. Um, and, and you'll be amazed just how fast you improve in this wonderful thing called the pastoral conversation. Thanks, guys. Bye.